The blue blade burns the broken bark of a boisterous barbarian. Well, actually, except he kind of doesn't. I don't know. Today on Comicology. So we have a very interesting comic book character today, uh, not because he does anything in particular, but because he gets so far in life uh, by not doing anything at all. That might actually be a controversial statement for uh, fans of this character, if there are any fans of this character, but I feel like by the end of this video, you're going to agree with me. The Blue Blade is a Golden Age vigilante with some actual skills. Uh, he is a trained actor and an athlete. Uh, he is also an expert fencer, gymnast, and equestrian. For those who don't know, that means he's good at riding horses. Seriously, this character is so controversial to me because I cannot imagine a stranger depiction of a superhero. Like, I get it. Like, he, he's a cavalier, and he acts heroic, and he's suave, and he's a definite interpretation of the kind of characters that we were seeing in movies at the time. It's just that he's a total fraud. <laughs> and I'm not sure he ever actually did anything good or kind or heroic in his entire career. Which, allow me to explain. The Blue Blade made his first appearance in USA Comics number 5, where he rescues the scientists from an evil Japanese spy in order to secure his invention, the Atom Smasher, for American forces. So, it's important to note that the Blue Blade, uh, since his very inception, was involved in sort of more patriotic forces, including his first appearance uh, in USA Comics. He is definitely not a member of the U.S. military, uh, but he's not not a member of the U.S. military. Does that make sense? Essentially, this initial story is only five pages long, and the Blue Blade takes down a villain pretty easily. You see, it's not that this is a bad story, um, it's the only story. <laughs> the problem here is that it doesn't feel genuine. Um, but upon further inspection, this might actually be by design. Later in his career, we find that the Blue Blade has been drafted into the Second World War, but not as a combatant. We find that he's working as a performer to entertain the troops. In fact, I also think it's worth noting that during his entire time in World War II, he doesn't, I mean, he's never seen participating in any battles or conflicts at all. In all of comic book history, I could not find him participating in any battles. He's just sort of this dude, this like half-naked dude, who runs around trying to get greater levels of publicity uh, to the point where he starts to garner animosity from other heroes. It's very suspect if you ask me. So he gets locked in suspended animation with the 11 other heroes and survives to see the modern age of 2008. So full disclosure, in case you're wondering, the answer is no. Blue Blade at this point does not go back to fighting crime. In fact, he never fights crime throughout the rest of his entire career. Blue Blade immediately decides to get back into the game. In fact, he's the only hero to quickly and unashamedly adapt to his new modern surroundings. When the Twelve were recovered, uh, they received tremendous media attention for being oddities from a long forgotten time, and as a result, uh, the Blue Blade found his opportunity to achieve the wealth and fame he had longed for his entire life. He was quickly able to broker his newfound fame to achieve a TV show, uh, but only under the condition that he takes on a sidekick. You see, like, the Blue Blade is just so uninterested in heroics that it gets to the point where it sort of takes his original Golden Age appearance and sort of reshapes it into a different light. I don't think he ever fought spies during the World War II. I do not think, I do not believe that Blue Blade ever actually fought spies during the war. What I think is that that original publication from USA Comics is actually a work of fiction. I think that that is an in-universe work of fiction uh, in which the Blue Blade is featured, 
but never actually happened, sort of like a Republican serial that exists in the Marvel Universe. And I just believe that that fits so much better uh, with this interpretation of the character uh, as he is slowly being revealed to us. So now Blue Blade needs a sidekick. So he asks around, but nobody is interested. Then he gets a brilliant idea of teaming up with the catatonic robot known as Electro. However, this wouldn't save the show as the Blue Blade continued to shoot his episodes, he routinely failed to connect with his audience. Desperate to boost his ratings, he makes a deal with the Electro's current owner to use the robot on the show, but during a stage test, his attempts to control the robot result in some sort of mental backfire. This causes all of Electro's memories to flood into his own mind, and as a result, he gains some sort of secret knowledge which he uses to blackmail one of his fellow heroes, known as the Dynamic Man. This plan backfires, however, when in the middle of the night, the Electro Robot comes to life and attacks the Blue Blade. There is a short struggle, but without any superpowers, the Blue Blade didn't stand a chance and was ultimately killed when Electro pushed him out of a window. And unfortunately, that's the end of the Blue Blade. It actually feels oddly tragic. It's weird. He feels like a man who doesn't have many values. He was both loved <laughs> and hated by a great many people, um, but he was a person who in the end was really only true to himself. And in a weird way, I kind of respect that. So what do you think? I'm curious. Uh, do you think the Blue Blade is a heroic character or not? Uh, do you think he's selfish? How do you feel that he fits into the Marvel Universe? Um, at the very least, I think he's he's interesting. I think that his original adventures were just were just works of fiction. I've just I've got so much to discuss when it comes to this character. So let me know. Let's have a conversation in the comments. Until next time, I will see you guys very soon.